AM defense. It's a little time to get excited. Though we're still rocking the 2020 software, there is a newer horizon that we can see now with a brand new competitor for DLSS. AMD is finally going to start pushing forward with what is supposed to be called the FSR, which is the freaking super resolution that's going to be built in that the gaming companies are going to have to fight. Besides that news, we're going to be getting into what's going down with the brand new 21.3.1. On top of the patch notes and some benchmarks, my name is Mac here at the MacGyver 7 channel and today is going to be a special treat because they also slipped in a new setting in the Adrenaline software that they didn't really tell anyone about. But I know this like the back of my hand so let's go ahead and get into it. As you can see I do have a teaser set up for us for before we get into the patch notes so we can see some stuff but one of the core things that I thought that was pretty neat is most people if you aren't getting this just make sure you go down and as this is recommended go to optional and then you can run and just Hit that update, it should be, mine's up to date. But what I wanted to show that I saw that they slipped in directly through the tuning is a stress test. It's actually not that bad. So if you have an overclock and you're wanting to run it, you can very easily just set it up at a duration of what time you want and it will crash it or basically go. They used to have one where it would automatically find your tuning uh, and it doesn't seem like that that worked out really well, but they're at least allowing you to stress test it before you test your best games. Besides that, as you can see, mine's already dialed in for as far as there. You see that I have some different settings. As usual, the new driver is going to be on the right, so that's going to be the 21.3.1. Hardware accelerator on on the top and hardware accelerator off on the bottom. For once, the ecosystem is playing quite well for the brand new driver. Though the platform compared to the new and old, there are some light and day differences. The one that I have highlighted right over here is an overclocked version that I basically pushed it to what I thought would be really cool. One of the core things that I saw that the peak temperatures have finally started to come down a lot. So, I mean, AMD is starting to dial in a little bit more precision with their older cards. So that fine wine technique is starting to actually come to fruition. At least for my Radeon 7, I'm starting to see a little bit more over room with what I can do with overclocking. Now, when we're looking driver to driver, as you can see that, well, now the new ecosystem and the new circumvent for as far as windows it actually did make it excel when going driver to driver in the direct x11 area for 1080p it kind of gets slaughtered but the consistencies and fixes that we're about to see are the differences for the lucky few that have the RX 6700 card coming their way, because you could buy that as of yesterday, hopefully that wasn't a paper launch or the bots got them before you did, I really hope the gamers got those. They promised and hopefully they delivered. I didn't hear anything bad in the news, so hopefully, fingers crossed. On top of that, Dune Internal comes into the Ancient Gods Part 2. Added support for as far as the Radeon Boost now supports DirectX 12 and the variable rate shading for these select titles, which they don't really tell, but I'm assuming that's what titles are good with DirectX 12. On top of the Radeon Anti-Lag, then supports on the DirectX 12 and the Performance Stress Test, which we just went over for as far as a newer portion of what you can utilize inside of there. On top of that, what tethers into the Vulkan support, as you can see the synchronization, the formats, the rendering on the conditionals, as well as the sampler for the YCBCR. Those are going to be something that are going to be coming up that are going to be able to make a lot more things for as far as down from memory, from API pipelines, to these just awesome resolutions that you'll be end up getting for as far as video decoding. Now, Vulkan is something very cool that AMD is kind of pushing forward with, but the fixes, these are even more cooler. As we look down, as we see that the Radeon software may be having some higher than expected CPU utilization when the system is idle, and something AMD is actually working on with having the smart access for as far as we can slide between both of those in tandem. Something Intel and Nvidia have done for years, now AMD is finally hitting that contending point and stepping their game up. On top of the system hangups and the crashes that may be experienced when upgrading the Radeon software and the Oculus VR headset is connected to your system. The Radeon CN graphics portion of the product not was not working now is. Minecraft for the DXR may exhibit the corrupted or missing textures when ray tracing is enabled on the RX 6000 series graphics product. On top of the situation for as far as crashes they occur during Call of Duty Modern Warfare when ray tracing was enabled in the 6000 series should be 
fixed up. Now we're looking at the 6800 series coming into render correction. This one is going to be for Star Civilization. For as far as the situation, for as far as we can see, the black screens come back into a fixing portion for as far as when you can enable and disable the enhanced sync with V-Sync is enabled in some Vulkan API games. The other portion of what that would come down to is the occurred when the hybrid graphics systems for some of the Vulkan API games and the enhanced synced was enabled. So those should hopefully be polished off. Bethesda makes the list for the launcher that may be experiencing the applications on startup when launching some games on top of the situation that was unable to create a new screen or as far as what we saw in Radeon Software's stream tab. So that scene is not there, but it is there now. For as far as when you first launch it, you can always do a factory reset, which I did notice that at the very end when I was already DDU'd and I installed it, they now recommend that you do a factory reset alongside of installing the new software. So AMD's catching on wise, because that was one thing I've always noticed, always fixed a lot of things. So hopefully this does fix a lot of other people, but I still, firmly like believe in DDUing, it, it just cleans up everything and keeps everything tidy. For as far as disabling the HDCP support and performing factory resets on the system reset may sometimes trigger a system crash or hang up on the boot no longer. On top of the Epic Games, the social overlays and the launchers may experience the color corruptions. On top of some of the games that came down for the application crashes in DirectX 12 when ray tracing was enabled in the 6000 series. For as far as Sword 7, that was one that was there. Now, Cyberpunk 2027, even though it may be broken directly from the developers and they need to step their game up, AMD has given a little bit of color correction for as far as the experiencing in the Radeon Boost when it's enabled. Disable the flickers for as far as the display will be there now and you will have no flickers on top of there for as far as what may occur during higher refresh rate resolutions, multiple screens, and configurations on top of the Radeon RX Vega series inside the graphics. The last thing that we come across is the audio loss that cuts out for as far as the intermittent may occur during the TV displays and the 5.1 and 7.1. So these are going to be what we have for as far as fixed issues and known issues are still out there. There are some workarounds that you can definitely take a look at for as far as what we can see. And there are some disclaimers that they have down below that we'll be taking just a quick look at in just a second. As we can kind of see that the start and cancel performance in the tuning may disappear in the Radeon software when resizing be small, unlimited numbers for as far as the displays for the preferred desktop resolution in Windows may change during the power cycle. On top of the V-Sync and Rocket League and the settings that are borderless for the full screen, which unfortunately did not get the fixed list this time around, and Radeon RX 400 and 500 series graphics cards are experiencing some higher than normal TDR, so heat in power for a lot of playback periods and that's not really cool literally on top of the brightness and the flickering the intermediate may occur for games and applications in the radeon FreeSync is enabled and the borderless and full screen that's a pretty broad term for as far as they're saying yeah when it's in full screen it can kind of do that so kind of weird but the enhanced portion of this and the black screens that are enabled for as far as the system configuration and experiencing sometimes the enabling portion if you disable is a workaround now for as far as what they have right over here for the disclaimer you can definitely look for as far as the limited clock frequencies down to the anti-lag and the boost compatibilities for windows 10 those are going to factor into for as far as directx 9 11 and 12 as well oh so with that being said now time for some benchmarks. As we left off with Firestrike, now we're gonna go to the extreme portions. As you can see that this newer driver does favor a little bit more of what the overhead would be with nicer, heavier applications in 1080p. So you can see that definitely the hardware accelerator off does take a little bit of the edge, but it's not by much. So with what I've solved between Firestrike to Firestrike Extreme, you can definitely probably leave it on with DirectX 11. But let's take a look at 4K. What does it show in the very end? As we can see that driver to driver, we are getting a little bit of progression in the right directions. Looking at this is really baffling when you see almost the identical scores. And literally, as you look at the graphics score right over there, they're 6744 for both the old drivers. It ties with itself. Hardware accelerator on and off. A little confusing, but 
sometimes it works like that. As moving on to the newer driver, you can see, again, it takes one point less, but with the hardware accelerator on, it definitely gained some points. So that's actually pretty good with 4K. So we can see that DirectX 11 is going to favor the hardware accelerator on currently, and we will probably see more in performance increasements as Windows brushes up their circumvents and the ecosystem on the framework that they're basically putting out. The more that that gets stabilized, as you can see right over here, sometimes even 3D Mark will say this is not an approved driver. It's kind of strange when it does that. Now, it is to be pointed out, I did run a secondary test on the newer drivers, and one of the consistencies I saw with Hardware Accelerator on is it stayed around the ballpark. One of the things I noticed with it off, as you can see now where it said approved and not approved, randomly, I know, it's really confusing, out of nowhere, it comes back to life. So, if you're in 4K and you do see some performance toggle off that hardware accelerator i can't stress that enough in today's market when you're coming down to a portion where your favorite game isn't working it's usually the ecosystem boosts so take off the hardware accelerator or put it on to see if those actually will fix with us now closing with directx 11 now we're going to take a look at directx 12 to see what has been improved especially with all the bigger improvements that they've made now lining up 4K right after each other for as far as the way that we can see that Time Spy Extreme comes into play. Now with the brand new driver, it definitely does still show a tiny bit. Percentage wise, as you can see throughout almost all of these, there's really not that bigger portions of drops unless you're looking at Fire Strike with the hardware accelerator off and on. Now with looking at the hardware accelerator off, you are going to gain a little bit of points for as far as it, but it still stays in that 66 percentile of performance. Now looking at just the regular time spy, you can see the consistency with the hardware accelerator off still continues. Again, no percentiles breaking, but we definitely see it improving from driver to driver. So end of the day. Should you install this? It seems like it's a nice move forward. It seems like AMD is waiting for the 2021 software that should have been launched my personal opinion when they dropped the 6000 series with the ray tracing and everything else that they're going to be in company with the newer portion of the rival dlss and hardware that is more than likely when they're going to release it they have not given us a release date as and when except for sometime later this year if i had to take a wild guess probably around summer when they will probably launch the 2021 ui that will be in company with the Radeon Adrenaline software. So I think this might be worth some people's time to install and check it out. It definitely seems like it has a little bit more key features that you could be useful for people that are overclocking and just people wanting to utilize their GPU. If you're newer to the network, you can always like, share, and subscribe for more future AMD relevant news as it comes hot across my channel. Make sure to slam that notification bell straight down the center like a Liberty Bell so you get all the notifications as they roll out. Have a very nice day and I look forward to seeing the comments of the community members and new people to see how this is performing. If you are having an issue, definitely drop down what GPU and what CPU you are utilizing in tandem in order to see what else is out there and what the problem is with that. Have a nice day, everyone, and I'll see you guys and gals in the near future. Stay safe, stay classy, and I'll see you there.